Hi, I'm Dan Slagan, CMO here at Tomorrow.io, and welcome to our on-demand recording of the keynote presentation we gave on the Sustainability Day at the Aerospace Technology Conference earlier this week in Atlanta. The name of our presentation is Climate Security in an Era of Uncertainty. For those not familiar with our mission here at Tomorrow.io, our mission is to equip humanity with the weather intelligence needed to adapt and thrive in an era of climate crisis. And as a number one climate adaptation platform, what we do is we work with companies and airlines around the world to help them understand the impact of weather in advance so they can make the operational challenges needed before it's too late to improve efficiency, mitigate business disruptions, and avoid any and all safety risks. As you can see, we work with a number of brands across a number of industries, but within the aviation space specifically, Aeromexico, Azul, Delta, JetBlue, United, US Air Force, and more. And we have a pretty exciting announcement today around JetBlue, which I'll get to a little bit later. Main focus of the talk is to really first and foremost, highlight the challenges that we're all facing today, then get into the weather technology that we all have that are mostly using today. But then most exciting, we'll talk about what's coming tomorrow, specifically around space to help us in our everyday roles. So think about three things all compounding on us at the same time right now, making our day-to-day -day jobs extremely challenging. One is weather volatility. Two is a lack of technology in order to do our jobs. And three is sustainability goals. Just think about weather volatility, the number of events happening every year, both in terms of frequency, volatility, they're increasing. They're getting harder to track, they're getting harder to measure, and the impact that they're going to have on our day-to-day -day operations, on our airlines, is growing. The technology that we're using for the most part, created by the government, whether it's NOAA or European Med Agency, and they're being repackaged by some large companies and pretty much just presented back to you. And then we get on the phone call each week with our account managers and our meteorologists, and we just talk through the weather data. This is not helpful. It's not actionable. The data that's coming in is too broad. It, right, Government systems are built to, for big alerts for major storms. They're not really built for the day-to-day -day needs or customizations that are needed for airlines to solve specific jobs on specific runways for specific flights. And then finally, sustainability goals, right? We're all used to doing things a certain way, and now we're being told we need to do things differently. We need to operate in a greener way. We need to find more sustainable ways of operating. And that can be extremely difficult when things like weather are getting worse, the technology that we're using is not sufficient, and these new goals are coming at us with incredible speed. So let's think about what's actually happening today and specifically what we're doing to help airlines. First, on the technology side of the house. So we have our own custom and proprietary data and models that we run here in-house. We do look at public data sources, but we also look at a host of private data sources as well. And we've created our own model that we run in the cloud, and that's what feeds into our platform. Now, our platform is 100% configurable, whether it's using our software or API, and we can customize it down to any job. So if you need to focus on winter operations, de-icing, ground operations, specific safety issues, taxing time, staffing updates, whatever it might be, you can solve for any job within our platform. And most exciting, you don't just get weather data. We're not going to tell you, hey, it's going to be 40 mile an hour winds tomorrow. We're going to take it down to the specific job and say, this flight is going to be canceled or going to be delayed on Thursday. You need to update your operating plans now. Update your customers, update your staff, update your operations. All of these things so you can improve efficiency, avoid business disruptions, and avoid any and all major safety risks. Here's a little example uh, just to give you a, an actual story. We're working with a major airline around automating decisioning specifically for de-icing. So we know snow, lightning, 50 mile an hour winds, that storm was approaching. It's going to cause a host of headaches for any airline. And we also know that airlines can't de-ice if winds are above 40 miles an hour. So we were able to find for this specific airport and this specific airline, a pocket of time when winds would be below 40 miles an hour. And we told them that a day ahead of time so that they could actually go in and make sure they updated their de-icing plan for the next day. They're able to de-ice all their planes during that pocket and get their flights out on time. They were the only airline that did this. Not So not only did they not have delays, but they also avoided 2 million in delay costs just from that one event. So that's just one example of how we do things. And this is a good example of sort of our weather intelligence platform 
everything is based on your operating protocols. And it's incredibly flexible. As you can see down below, I've put in four different industries, none of which are in the aviation world on purpose, just to show you how flexible the platform is. But for instance, we can take your operating protocol around things like ground ops procedures, de-icing, anything. And then we're tracking the weather impact on that protocol 24 seven. And anytime we see that there's a risk happening, we're gonna signal that risk to you. And then importantly, we're going to recommend exactly what you need to do and when, and alert all the stakeholders within your airline to help you make sure that that happens. Everything is around actionable insights. We're helping you improve safety, situational awareness, and really make sure your business is being run on time. And every single time that there is an update or a recommendation happening, we have a dashboard that you see, but you're also able to dig in to see all of the specific things as to what triggered that recommendation and why. And this can help you around your day-to-day -day operations, but also, as we mentioned, around sustainability, around some of your larger, greener initiatives that you have. This is an example from JetBlue Sustainability Report. And you can see over on the right in that green box, they're actually talking there about tomorrow.io and around their fuel efficiency program, and they're working to reduce in-air and on-the-ground fuel burn through improvements in some of their procedures around dispatch and taxiing and other things. Those are things that we're able to work with JetBlue on in addition to their day-to-day -day operations. So weather intelligence can be used for both day-to-day -day as well as sustainability, which is great. And you can solve for any use case, but also all the features that you need. I won't go through all the features because we have a lot to get through, but you need to look at things like lightning impact, 2D flights, 3D flights, desk assignments and flight route filtering all within the platform. Our insights library that we've built is pre-built. It's for thousands of different jobs and insights where you can come in, instantly look at our pre-built high winds procedure, customize it to your needs and be up and running within hours. Everything is already done for you in an automated way. As you can see, just by what's out there right now with Tomorrow.io, the next generation is here. And the way we like to think about things as far as taking that next step is think about any airline, 4,000 flights a day. How are you going to possibly measure and predict weather impact on 4,000 flights every single day by strictly relying on humans? We love meteorologists. We have some on staff and they're incredible people, but humans in general just cannot understand and predict that level of scale on a daily basis. So really around democratizing weather, that is what we're here to do. We're bringing weather and the impact of weather to the entire organization, as opposed to only having it live within a small group of people that still can understand the scale because it's just too much. We almost think about it like climate security being the new cybersecurity. Think about cybersecurity. Every major enterprise business now has this. Imagine just having a group of humans trying to monitor all of the cyber risks that are coming at your company every single day, 24 seven. It's crazy. You'd never think in today's world that that would even be a possibility. Of course, you're gonna use automated systems. Climate security is the exact same way and how you're able to predict and understand weather for your airline is the exact same way. You need an automated platform, you need weather intelligence. And as I mentioned, it can be for day to day, but also around sustainability. That wonderful intersection of sustainability, customer happiness and cost savings, it's the ultimate in efficiency and operations. You know, I already talked about the de-icing example, but if you think about it, you're able to do two things at once when you understand the impact of de-icing in advance and can be proactive about it. One, you can reduce the amount of pollution that you're putting into the air and the amount of chemicals that we're using. But then two, you're also able to cut costs because you're not gonna have to de-ice more than once or you're not gonna use the wrong de-icing fluid or you're not gonna do it at the wrong time. That's really great for both sustainability goals, as well as day-to-day -day operating goals and efficiency goals. You can also improve the customer experience by reducing frustration at the airport, improve customer happiness. If you know certain flights are going to be affected ahead of time, you can send updates to your customers well in advance so that you're not always having the at airport incidents that are happening. Fuel, big one around reducing usage, reducing emissions equals greener operations. Understanding how weather is going to impact a certain flight, we can improve routing with a more complete weather forecast for our teams and our pilots. We can also use historical data to understand and better understand the most efficient routes, given what we've seen over the past X number of years. Removing contingency fuel for unknown weather for ETOPS flights, 
of course, regulatory approval, but uh, that's just one example where you might not need to carry as much fuel and you can reduce the amount of, of impact that you have there. And then finally around reducing taxi times through better runway configuration and planning. Those are just four examples of real use cases that you can be solving every single day and longer term with a platform like Tomorrow IO. Now, I mentioned JetBlue. They've been a wonderful customer of ours uh, for the past five, six years. And actually this week, we had a big, big announcement with them. We have now been selected by JetBlue to provide weather forecasting technology across all of their flight operations. It's an amazing growth story. We started with JetBlue about five years ago in one airport in Boston at Logan. And just a short five years later, we are now being used as a sole provider across their entire organization. This is a true signaling of change, the changing of the guard. And this is where the industry is going. It's a shift from the weather systems and the type, the way that we look at weather in the past to this new approach and the next generation approach of much more actionable weather intelligence for operating our airlines. Now, I also talked about space. It's a very exciting thing. And all the technology and the insights and the platform features that we have today are great. We genuinely think we have the best solution in the business. But as we think about what's next, what's coming next, space is where we head. Think about the world right now and where we have really good weather forecasting, almost real time. We have it in some of parts of the globe. You can see you know, North America, parts of Europe, other words. But look more importantly about the areas where we're dark, over the oceans, over South America, Africa, parts of Asia Pacific. Even across North America and Europe, there's things that we all know that we wish were different. And this really is what we look to address. Quality weather information is not universal. We actually have almost 5 billion people that are living outside of radar coverage. That dark area on the map that I just showed you, that's about 5 billion people. We also don't have any radar coverage over oceans. So when we're flying from New York to London, we don't have active radar over that ocean. And the existing satellites that we have actually do not offer the best solution out there. And so the only way we can achieve global coverage is by going to space. And this has been incredibly difficult to do until now. Just to give you a sense, there's one satellite in space right now that was built about 10 years ago. It cost around a billion dollars and it sends weather data back to us once every three days. Tomorrow IO, we're incredibly excited to announce we've spent the last few years building our own satellites. We have about 30 between satellites equipped with radar and microwave sanders, and they're gonna start launching over the course of the next few months. Now, in addition to giving us full access into parts of the world like South America and Africa and parts of Asia, they're also going to give us coverage over the ocean. And they're going to increase that current refresh rate that I mentioned of three days right now to three hours conservatively. That's going to allow us to vastly understand, understand the impact weather is going to have on our day-to-day -day operations in a much, much better way, in addition to helping us solve for climate goals and initiatives for longer term. I put this in there just so you can see this is uh, this is real. The picture on the left is our team or a, a small number of folks on our team. And that is the actual satellite, one of them. And we're in our final preparations to actually send this up to space, as I mentioned, over the, the coming months. And over on the middle and right hand side, you can see a 3D rendering of what one of the satellites is, is going to look like. So extremely exciting. This is a true game changer because it's going to give us full atmospheric and oceanic observation system capabilities right at our fingertips. Between the radars and the sounders, we're going to be able to have much, much better information insight, be able to look into clouds, understand precipitation, understand what's happening over the oceans, real-time disaster warnings, cyclone tracking, and all those different types of things that right now we really don't have quality data and predictions for. The number of applications that will be applicable across the world is quite vast. In aviation, I already mentioned better access to understanding what's happening over the oceans, or if you're flying to South America or Africa, or even parts of North America and Europe. More tactically, you can think about update and better lightning procedures, high wind procedures, turbulence avoiding, avoidance, route planning, better fuel consumption, reducing fuel usage, reducing costs, just improving efficiency, and of course, safety risks, really making sure we're both mitigating safety risk and avoiding business disruptions as well. We're so excited about this, as is the industry, that as the satellites haven't even gone up yet, we've already seen pretty significant investment from folks like the U.S. Air Force. They invested almost $20 million 
in us last year just to start helping us and continue to fund the satellite creation and the constellation creation. Again, big pat on the back from them, just given the actual impact that these satellites are going to have. We started off this talk talking about weather volatility, lack of technology, sustainability goals as things that are really making our jobs difficult and making how we think about the future and how we go about our day-to-day -day and longer-term jobs seemingly impossible sometimes. But I'm here to tell you that the climate adaptation system that Tomorrow.io has built, powered by weather intelligence, and now we tack on space in addition to that, we are here to completely revolutionize and bring the predictive insights and data to the aviation industry that you've all and we've all wanted for so long. And we're extremely excited to say that it's here today. So here's my email, dan.slagan at tomorrow.io. Please give me a shout if you have any comments or questions. We'd love to talk to you, whether it's about our weather intelligence platform now, or if you want to start talking about some of the early access opportunities that we have around our space data, we'd love to talk to you about that as well. So thank you so much for joining and we look forward to talking to you soon.